Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Scourge League 3.16. In this episode, I'm going to be crafting this crazy body armor and showing you guys through the entire crafting process. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I wanted to quickly show that the two mods we're looking for is T1 increased effect of non-cursed auras from your skills, and this is uh, item level 80 redeemer, and then there's also uh, increased effect of offerings 21 to 25. Uh, 80 and then you maven orb these to the t1 maven orb tier you It was cheaper to buy an astral plate six link and then add a redeemer's exalted orb to give it the influence to have because I wanted a really good item level base Item sells much more to vendors, so you can corrupt it later without ruining the max, uh, the all res that a natural plate gives you. To craft T1 aura effect on the Redeemer chest plate, I use Bound Fossils. Okay, and now we have to Maven Orb. Okay, so the idea is you have two mods, and uh, they're both Redemption, and it's gonna upgrade one, delete the other. So you have to not miss. Just don't miss, bro. Fuck! Yes! Uh-oh. No influence mod, though. I upload daily. Please like and subscribe. Okay, so protecting suffixes, I should be able to... Let me check. Okay, I'm recording. Uh, I should be able to keep the aura effect, and then it should roll fizz taken as cold. There we go. That's so cool. That's huge. Alright, now we can Maven Orb. Alright, here we go again. Boom! Here we go again. T1. Suffixes again, okay. Alright, let's Maven Orb this increased aura effect. Yes! Alright. So now we can destroy this, add it to this, and pray. We need an Awaken Orb. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, my YouTube members on my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you to Steven C, Hannes, Brandon, George, Rico549, The Chrome Dog, Garbar, Neon, Tridenix, that name, Nicholas, White Wolf, Pascal. Thank you guys so much. And thank you to anyone who joins the Patreon of the YouTube members today. Okay, let's awaken our orb this. We're going to destroy the bad, add it to the good. Uh, let's get rid of this. <laughs> let's get rid of these things. They're in my way. Trash. Okay. We have our great... And our other one. Okay, here we go. Uh, I think I'm ready. Wish me luck. There we go. Uh, suffixes cannot be changed here before you harvest craft. Just to make sure it doesn't change the suffixes, obviously. It obeys meta crafting. Alright, so we're going to chaos craft on this. And here we go. We got T2. Fuck me. What did we get though? Wait, we didn't even get the suffix. Oh my god, we still have the suffix. Wait, and we have open. Okay, here we go. Chaos. And... No. I oh, Holy shit, look at that chaos roll. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Chaos and... Fizz to Chaos T1. Yes! Yes! Oh, oh my god, we can still Ashling! Oh my god! It's broken! I crafted suffixes cannot be changed on my chest plate before doing Ashling 4 because she removes a mod then adds a veil, so you don't want her, her to remove one of the suffixes. And then it's a 50-50 if she removes the fizz damage taken as chaos or the suffixes cannot be changed. And uh, yeah, watch and find out what happens. Yes! 
Okay, let's unveil this. Avoid. We didn't get it. Oh no. Uh, so yeah, on the chest plate we were looking for an unveil to get percent uh, life, 10%, and percent mana. But instead we got avoid elemental ailments and avoid stun. And then I crafted life 85. And so this is the chest plate. And um, avoid ailments isn't bad because we can actually use this with the boot of 43%. Um, this is the shaper boot. So we have up to 45% chance to avoid elemental ailments. And then I have an implicit here of 25% chance to avoid elemental ailments. So altogether, we get 100% chance to avoid ailment, elemental ailments. This is like the duration, but now we're also immune to chill ground and shock ground. I only did this because I got the chest plate unveil. It was lucky. Uh, I would keep the duration if I had, like, if I didn't have this chest plate. But um, the chest plate changed it because I got lucky. So really sick. All right, let's let's compare the body armors now. So this was our old body armor um, to get plus one active skill gems, plus one intelligence skill gems uh, is very cheap with the with the uh, strength gems. It was like three to three and a half x, right? Uh, you you don't need the dexterity, and the strength gems basically gives a level to the awakened gems, which can help them reach level five sooner or get you a little bit extra damage. Um, but the main reason you use this chestplate is the plus two with the active skill gems and the plus one intelligence skill gems gives two to the carry on golem. And so this chestplate was a, uh, equivalent to giving 560,000 in my current dead fit build. So then it would be like just over two mil DPS uh, total. And so if you had this chestplate and you swapped it to uh, the new chestplate. So this isn't even perfectly rolled. Um, this is just what we have for now uh it's already more damage uh also i gain 3000 armor uh i also have the physical damage taken as chaos uh somebody also pointed out that the aura effect means that we go from uh 100 uh, 100 impale to 113 impale so when you check in calculations the impale is over 100 percent and if you remove rotting claws we actually uh, are still at 100%, so that's insane. Uh, then we have the offering, so technically that can go higher. Um, the And then we also did the unveil for the avoid elemental ailments, so now I'm immune to elemental ailments through avoid, so I can do sh shock ground and shield ground now. Um, and we got extra chaos res, so the this chest plate obviously costs a lot, but it has so much stats compared to just plus two in life. It, the, the damage is the, similar, right? That's the nice thing. My old chest plate has so much power, so much damage for so cheap. And then really, this is just a lot of everything else. And uh, the damage comes in a way that you wouldn't expect. Aura effect in 3.16. Feels good, man. Uh, so now I want to go through the second POB because obviously, so the, the plus two is great. It's cheap. It's a great early option. I still recommend it for early uh, plus two early power. If you don't have a level 30 carry on golem, that's a power spike and you want it to get to 30. Um, so in this build, it was 32 and that's why we could take out the chest plate um, and it's still 30 where you could use the chest plate to get it to 30 if it's not already 30 if you don't have the amulet or maybe uh, and if, if you have the cold iron points it's actually easier to get this to 30 um, yeah so that's part of thinking about when to swap to the convoking ones because you lose a level so you have to think about your level 30 carry on golems it's a pretty big deal um, yeah so then this chest plate let me show you the new POB alright so this is the POB with the chest plate and you're like it looks pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, but look, look. So your cluster becomes not needing to be Rotting Claws. So we have a fe Feasting Fiends, Renewal, Vicious Split, <laughs> 8 passive. It was 3x instead of costing the big, big, big money. That's insane. Okay. Uh, that was nice. Uh, that And then you get Feasting Fiends, which is 10% extra life. And then you get the extra uh, Leech. So then I'm like, yo, I don't need the leech on this. So we took off the 1% leech. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, we have extra skill points. And 
And so uh, I was like, huh, extra one point here for some damage, sure. Or I put crit. And uh, I took off the accuracy that I had put on because I realized that my level 30... Here, let me try showing you this. My level 30 carry-on golems against Cyrus are inaccurate. When they were 32, they're accurate. This is crazy, right? So over-leveling them was actually good. So then I realized, oh yeah, blind got changed. It actually reduces the evasion of the enemy by 20%, so it's actually damage, not just defensive. And so it, it lowers the enemy's accuracy, if you look in here. Instead of 8,663, it lowers it to 6,930, which honestly, in my opinion, blind is more efficient than us stacking accuracy because the enemy has seems to have more evasion than we have accuracy and then the stacking of the accuracy was only 12 percent and we got 20 percent uh minus evasion with blind and then all i needed to do was the blind jewel i already had it i've had this list the whole time i just didn't realize the new buff so blind um this is the blind change yeah so blind on hit i've had it the whole time so this, our minions attack so fast, 10 times per second, there's four of them. We have the zombies, the specters, the AG, a um, lot of attacks per second, so, and it could be hit, like, the first hit could blind, right? So, or the second hit, the third hit, it doesn't have to take 20 hits to blind, so you can get blind instantly, basically. But some hits will definitely be um, missed, which are only, like, 1% of those hits, because we're 99, 98, and that's only against our... You see what I'm saying. It's really good. Um, so then, I show... Okay, so we had more life. 200 more life. More armor. Same damage. And and the accuracy didn't matter. Yeah. Um, okay, so then I show in here. 20, uh, 16,000. We, we... Okay, let me show you this. It's insane. Uh, is that the old one? No, this one. The old one was 12, 46, 30, 16, 60, 54. Because the armor makes a bigger molten shell, which it helps protect our Ellie and our Chaos 2. So then also the physical, all that armor, uh, and this is against a 10,000 physical hit and an 86. So from 12 to 16, um... And then this is also counting, we have the 13% as chaos. If I rolled this perfectly and had the 15% as chaos, it would help, obviously. That's 2% of 13, it's a lot. Um, and then, so it's huge, huge difference, right? The effective pool didn't change that much for the physical, but the max hit taken is, is the main difference here. Um, and then I show you, I've made another change. So we have our, our actual one now. Uh, I came up with... Not only the Feasting Fiends change, but I could get a Watcher's Eye on the build. Alright, so we figured I figured out that uh, I wanted to go a Watcher's Eye, so my, my logic went like this. Uh, my old tree looked like that, remember? Oh, wait. Let me grab the... I'll grab the old, old one, yeah. The 12k one. So, you know the tree looked like this. Um, so I was like, okay, let's just do this. And then I said, how hard is it to get to a Jewel Socket? Um, five points, and then I said, "How how hard is it to get to this one?" Five points. It's also this one is five points. They're the same, but um, then I figured out there's a bunch of points, so I have an extra jewel socket, and I could do this, and uh, it actually works out. And then you just have to get the intelligence, um, and you get the watcher's eye, and everything works, and then you get the extra determination. Um, but I'll just show you the actual POB now. So, new POB. Watcher's Eye. I went for, uh, this was my favorite mod. 8% Fi 8, 8, 8 physical damage reduction affected by determination. And then, um, you get, I also got armor while affected by determination. And I, I checked in POB for my build, uh, which one was better, the armor or the reduced crit. And... Well, the armor is consistent that I need this all the time, and it's it would really help. It's kind of like being a champion, where the um the the crit 
is only when they crit, and I have a Garba of the Ephemeral, which stops them from critting a lot of the time. Uh, and so I figured this would be more consistent. Then I looked it up, and it was 17x. The one with just 8% and crit was like 10% 10x or something. They're pretty fucking expensive. But yeah, Watcher's Eye, uh, what it added to the build. Are you guys ready? So yeah, this is the tree difference uh, with Path here also. I noticed that uh, I had a Convoking Wand that I got Minion Ellie Res, which meant that I didn't need this Ellie Res, so I swapped it to Physical Damage Reduction, and people need to... They're gonna... People are gonna do this without watching the video, and they're not gonna know what the hell happened, and, well, that's on them, dude. But they can at least see it in the stats that the minions are still res-capped when you check it for, like, the carry-on golem. It is res-capped, and they'll see that it was from a Convoking one, and they'll... Hopefully, if they know how to look into it, they'd find it, but... Yep, <laughs> that changed. I changed that just because that small. So that eight percent extra mi minion physical damage reduction instead of eight Eli res. Uh, this makes a difference, obviously. Um, that's insane. And then uh, yeah, no leech. We have the feasting fiends, um, and I, I put my mediums as intelligence as the small passive five. So I have ten intelligence. So there's where I got the extra ten intelligence. I told you I was missing. Uh, it was through two mediums. They were very cheap because I made a change to the build and no one was doing this until I've made the build. And then, um, yep, and then, uh, I have 17,831 armor, no flat, same setup, but is the Watcher's Eye difference? And then the physical damage reduction? Okay, so, uh, against the Okay, so with the changes, with the Watcher's Eye, it goes 20,062.55, and our sitting armor is 17,831. Um, and then the old setup was 16,000, 60,000, 54. So you can tell that this is mainly focused on the physical. And taking the 16 to 20 is 25%. Um, that's massive. When I, when I buff my LE by the, you know, the 30 with the, or like the 20 something with the Zabakwa and the Chaos, and then the Chaos is super high too. Now we are upping our physical by massive portions as well. Um, nice. And that's without Flas, that's without uh, any Pantheons, no Pantheons enabled, no Fortify. This is just the without anything this is the consistent reliable pretty nice except for one corpse okay that one corpse um yeah pretty cool this is really really cool and yeah this is with basically no evasion so the blind doesn't work for our defenses and then i can show you just for fun so our actual build which one's our actual this one our actual build uh this is what i recommend in my current setup actually so this will this might blow some people's minds i figured out that if you technically took my build uh and you use my flask okay so here we go granite flask 17,000 to 29,000 takes you to 34,600 already just off that and your other ones go up too because it's armor and your molten shell okay uh taste of hate let's just try that uh 27 so that's 7,000 off of just one flask 7,500 uh that's really strong uh okay and it's because it's the, taking the 15 percent is cold and you can see that then it turns into 258,000 it's better than your physical that's why the flask is so good then jade flask um, so you can see that the, the max hit didn't change, but the effective hit pool changes. So watch this, 40, 94. Just adding some evasion, 32, 75. So that it adds like massive damage reduction. That's 25% against Cyrus just for having 3,000 evasion. Um, and so I'm realizing that I want evasion. Uh, I really want evasion especially with our blind and the dread banner uh it seems really strong yep and then if you did all three uh we're looking at 49 80 101 72 and technically you can run a ruby and then you'd have um 101 against that too uh and then we have yeah the 49 physical which is pretty pretty tanky so then it's showing that without them we had the 20 and then we go up to 49 and then I can show you what pantheons I run. This is to show you how much of a difference everything makes. So with Lunaris, if there's eight enemies around you, let's say you're in a delirium, you're doing a scourge, you're doing a, a simulacrum, you're doing anything. 
eight enemies around you. Uh, you get hit five times because you're getting swarmed. You're not getting one-shotted, okay? Let's be real. Look at the build. It was... You're not getting one-shotted. Now, this is what it looks like in Delirium and Mapping. With everything up. If you're killing fast enough, if, if you keep your flasks up permanently, if you are getting hit and you have your um pantheons your eight enemies nearby and you're and you're getting hit and you have been hit recently and then you even have 10 fortifier boom that's what we're looking at right now builds pretty sick uh, obviously i showed you what it is without all the flasks so um that's the real like what 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 can go wrong you know but this is at its top end what it what is possible and we can obviously improve upon this um i'm also noticing a mage blood basically causes this to be permanent if you had a mage blood which is really insane so uh dude mage blood <laughs> either way uh this is the new changes uh, i was showing you obviously this is why i made the changes with the watcher's eye and um and then we we had made the we have the upgrade chest plate where it really helped our armor and our physical damage reduction and still we had the damage um and then we have the avoid ailments now. Different way of getting it. You can get 100% avoid ailments and it's slightly better because of shock ground and chill ground. But either way, that is the full complete package of the of the new body armor. Um, and how it how it impacted the, the build. And, and then I also, well I had to go over my change in the build. I made this watcher's eye and how I path the tree different and the accuracy. I think the accuracy thing because of the blind is really neat and people need to know that. I forgot about that change. That's crazy. Yeah, the less evasion is actually helpful. Nice. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was everything you expected. I hope you liked the body armor. It's pretty sick. Obviously, it's absolutely insane. How much should we spend overall? I would say 30 to 40x for the body armor. Um, I have more crafting videos probably to come. Uh, this is just the beginning. I think this is a really fun uh, time. I had a great, great time crafting, and uh, I want to craft more. And I think that harvest thing with the meta crafts is really insane dude delving is awesome 433 delve is sick and i'll see you guys in the next episode bye